everyone, it's Tammy, and for this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this little flap card. And you can open it up like this, and you can put your note in here, however you want. If you wanted to put another piece of white paper here, you could, and continue your note on. Or you can leave it just like this, or you could even put a little bit of snail on the back of a gift card and place your gift card in here and it could hold a gift card for you if that's what you how you'd like to present a gift card. Another way to do a gift card is to add little slits on opposite corners, so like this corner and this corner or this corner and this corner. And before I put the base down, I would take this and I would make a little slit with my X-Acto knife in the uh, cardstock just like that, just at an angle just like that and then your card would pop right in and then you would tape the card down to the cards to the card base and your gift card would be secure in there. I would feel comfortable using just a little bit of snail on the back though and just adhering it on there if that's what you wanted to do. Heck, you could even put it here at the bottom or here at the top. It's this is a nice sized card. It's kind of fun for a gift card or just for a note. So, I just made it for a note. And let me show you what I did. So you're going to need a kind of a stronger piece of cardstock, and then I also used a piece of patterned paper. This happens to be double-sided. That's kind of fun. If you want to do two sides, you can. I thought this was kind of a fun, summery kind of card, so I went with this ice cream that I have in my retired cardstock, and I picked a couple colors that I thought matched pretty well, and then I picked a color of matching coordinating cardstock for the base. So I want this to be cut at three and a half by 11. So it's a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and I just cut this at three and a half inches. Then I'm going to score this at four and a quarter and eight and a half. So I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter and then eight and a half um, would be two and a half inches from the other side. So instead of pulling out my arm, I just, my arm on my cutter, I just figure out the opposite way <laughs> and score it that way. So it is scored at four and a quarter and eight and a half. Now, I made this one with this cute little, uh, I don't know, just circled image or circled end. And there are a few ways that you can do that. If you want to, if you have something like this, you might need it a little bigger than this, you could use that and trace around it and that's how you could make your half circle on your cardstock. I happen to have this little roundy tool that I got from my bullet journal. And if you have one of these, you can use this too. Whatever you have that could do a circle. I would need a little bigger card or a ribbon roll. I think this one might do if I wanted to do this. Yeah, this one would work nicely. See how that fits? And it's just a ribbon roll. So you could use this if you have something like this as well. This ribbon is pretty old, but I still keep all of my old stuff. Now, so I'm going to put this here, and I don't have any particular, I'm not lining it up with anything in particular. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm gonna take a pencil and just mark it like that. And again, you're marking the short end. Yeah. And then I'm going to cut a piece of the designer paper. I want this to be three and a quarter by four inches because this is just going to go, This the first piece is just going to go on the inside of this so I'm just cutting this piece so I want it to be three and a quarter by four so I'm gonna go to my four and then three and a quarter I this might be there already I'm not sure if I prepped that or not I did so three and a quarter by four so there we go for that and then I want another piece that will fit on this piece but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and I just need my handy scissors I like to use longer scissors for this because then I can get most of it in one fell swoop and to me that makes my cut a lot smoother 
I don't know if I'm just not the best cutter or if that happens to everyone, but either way, if I do it carefully with one or two little movements of the scissors, it gives me a much better cut. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this where I think I want it on on the cardstock and remember that this is going to be folded down. So you want it, if you have a design, you want it to be facing the correct way. And I'm going to hold it where I want it. Oops. And then I'm going to turn it over. And then, this is going to be weird, I'm going to pull it down about a quarter of an inch. Just straight down. Just like that. And then I'm going to draw my line. And then I'm going to cut this out. This is scrap. And these are the two pieces that you need with this. So let's go ahead and build the card. And then I also need a piece for the inside, don't I? I didn't cut that. I need a piece the same size as this for the inside. So I want this to be three and a quarter by four. So I wonder how wide this is. Okay, I'm gonna go three and a quarter by four. And this will be for the inside sentiment of my card. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fold this and then I'm gonna fold this down. So I have this so far. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put this one here. If you wanted to add any embellishments or anything, you might do that before you put this down, but I'm, I'm not planning on adding any ribbon or like that for this, any regular ribbon. And then I'm going to put this on the inside. And again, this is where I would cut this if I wanted this to hold a gift card and I wanted to put the notches in, I would do that now before I put it down. But I don't wanna do that, I just wanna leave it so I can write a little note. This particular card would be cute to put an ice cream gift card in there graders or something like that. Then I'm going to put this right on top and because you pulled it about a quarter of an inch it fits so that it's got that nice border all the way around and it's not perfectly up against it like that. It has a little nice border all the way around. And you know what you could do? You could even, since this is double sided, you could put it this way if you wanted to. Of course it was made to cut the other way so it looks a little funny I might have to trim it up if I wanted to do that but I'll just leave it like this because I didn't get this totally even but you can't tell when you're just you know looking at it so don't worry if yours is like that too I am NOT into making everything perfect and precise I just like it to look aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> so there we go. There's the base of the card pretty much. Now kind of the fun part. This is fun anyway. I like this fold. It's kind of neat to do new folds and different things with your cards. But what I'm going to do is take my balloon punch and I have a couple pieces of cardstock that are coordinating colors. And of course I have the peach color because that's the color I did the card base in. And you know what? I'm even going to take this scrap and I'm going to cut a couple out of the back because I like that polka dot too. Now I don't know that I will use all of these, but it's kind of fun. So you can kind of play with them, see how you might want them. I 
I kind of might want it just like that. So then what I'm going to do is I pulled out some twine. I thought this was fun to put on here. And I'm going to, I don't know if I'll tie it on here. That was my first thought is that I'd tie some twine onto the balloon. Let's see if I can do that without it causing too much of an issue. If I can't, I'll show you what, and you know what, I'm just going to do this because this will make sure it'll stay. I'm just going to tie a little knot in the twine and I'm not going to make it really tight because it's really not holding anything. Then I'm going to get a glue dot. And I'm going to put that on the front of the balloon. And then I'm just going to attach this to the front of the balloon as though it's tied, you know, around the balloon. And then my glue dot is a little big, so I'm just pushing it down with my fingernail so that it's just underneath the knot and it's not sticking up anywhere. And then I will take my scissors and cut the twine off about there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other two balloons. So just loosely tie a knot. The front of the balloon gets the glue dot. The knot goes right on the glue dot. And then take your nail and make sure the glue dot is just underneath the knot. And then cut this off wherever you desire. Go long because you could cut it shorter, but you can't ever cut it longer. Last one. Oh, I put my glue on there before I tied the knot, but that's okay. And put the knot on the glue dot. And then what you're going to do is you want to take a dimensional and you want to put it underneath this fold well the you want to put it underneath the oh what are we calling this the flap so just put it right underneath the flap like that so it still closes all the way but it's right up next to it hopefully you guys can see that and then whichever one you want in the back is the one that you need to put on first. So I'm going to take that off. And then I'm just going to put this on here and I want it to be a little higher. Now I'm going to have to be careful because now that I'm thinking about this, I just put it on here. I'm going to bend this to get it in and out. So I'm just going to have to be careful when I'm closing it. I mean, it's going to, it's possible. It's just going to be a little maybe harder to close since I have it, since I have so much paper up here, but that's okay. I should have maybe moved it down just a hair. And then I'm going to do the same thing with all of these, hooking them onto the other wherever I want them. And I can either use snail adhesive or I can use pop dots, whatever, you know, you feel like you want to use. And I think I'll just use pop dots just because. So let's see if this one is here, I'm going to put a pop dot on this side of it. And I'm just going to make sure that this pop dot doesn't touch that balloon that's just over there and doesn't get in the way of the flap. Same with this one. I want this pop dot to not touch this balloon because I want it to be the same height. I don't want this one necessarily sticking up. If you do, then, then put it on the balloon. I mean, that might be cute too, but I already put it over here, so that's fine. And then I'm going to stick that down over here somewhere. I want the, I want all the strings to show. So they're all hanging down. I'm going to cut this one down just a hair. And 
And then I have all my strings. You can tie this in a little bow if you want to. You know how sometimes that is, like the bouquet of balloons is tied up. I'm not going to do a bow, I'll just do a knot. Easier said than done. I can't get it wrapped around there. There we go. I think I got it. There we go. Now it's a knot. So then I'm going to take these two ends and cut them off. And so now all my little ribbons are held together. And I just think that's simply adorable. And it has little ice cream and balloons, so it's kind of like a birthday celebration. And then to put it in there, you just manipulate it so that it gets underneath the balloons. That's all you need to do is make sure the flap goes behind the balloons. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. All right, I hope you guys try it. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial this week. And until next week, thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.